Clove might just be the best agent ever released in Valorant. And so I'm gonna teach you everything you'll need to know to dominate games with this character. First of all, what the heck is Clove? Like so many of the newer agent designs, Clove feels like a combination of multiple agent classes to create a sort of duelist controller hybrid. Seriously, can we just ditch the agent classes already? At first, I was kind of worried that this would end up being just another selfish dud like Reyna or Iso, but after logging several games on Clove and theorycrafting a bit, the gameplay feels really incredible. There's this cool mix of aggressive positioning and fighting where you can easily pop off, but also some really nice moments of team play thanks to your smokes and combo bull utility. The smokes are super easy to deploy and all of the utility actually feels really straightforward, but definitely has some depth to mastering it. The first place that we need to start when dissecting a new agent is the utility kit and how each piece of that utility can be used for maximum value. Pick Me Up is very similar to Reyna's Devour in that it becomes usable only after killing an enemy or getting a damaging assist. Unlike Reyna's Devour, however, Pick Me Up instantly brings you to full HP and armor and has added movement speed to really make you a multi-fragging demon. The difference between needing to stay in line of sight with the corpse to heal and being able to continue moving and swinging is a very tangible difference, and honestly, Reyna players should be in shambles. This is a real duelist ability, and it can bail you out of some insane spots by popping the heal at just the right timing to win a fight and then escape to safety. It's worth noting that Pick Me Up doesn't actually heal you, so once the timer on it runs out, if you had 5 HP before you used it, you will be back to 5 HP after. This ability really sets the tone on how you want to be playing Clove. This is an agent that wants to be fighting, wants to be brawling, and is heavily rewarded for fearless gameplay. At face value, Metal feels a little bit underwhelming as an ability. We already have several other forms of decay in the game, and the projectile has somewhat limited range, which makes it a bit hard to come up with good lineups for. But let's take a moment to step into the practice range and just explore what 90 decay looks and feels like in action. These bots have full armor, and this is the normal time to kill with body shots from a Phantom or Vandal. Now, let's compare that to after hitting the bots with the decay from Metal. It's pretty easy to see how you might be able to mow down an entire attacking team trying to push through a choke point with a well-timed metal and a quick spray. But in my opinion, where metal gets really scary is on the eco rounds. Just look at how powerful a weapon like a classic Frenzy or Sheriff can feel once you've removed over half the opponent's HP pool. The Spectre becomes a beam weapon and really don't even get me started on shotguns because being able to turn your weak buys into deadly situations for only 250 credits is a massive amount of impact that can completely change the trajectory of a game. I also think that the simple nature of the projectile is a really good thing here because Clove is at their best when the game turns into to a brawl and being able to reliably just chuck out a 90 damage AOE nuke in the middle of a hectic execute is extremely useful. I mean, just imagine dropping a metal on top of a Killjoy setup to defend a choke point. That's about as brutal as it can get. Okay, now let's talk about Clove's smokes. They're a bit of a remix between Brimstone's deployment method and Omen's regenerative consistency, and this makes a super interesting and really powerful utility combo. Not only can you instantly set up for a sight hit, as there's essentially no travel time for the smokes to land, but you will likely have at least one smoke back up when the defending team tries to retake the site. It is important to remember though that the smokes only regenerate one at a time, so if you drop both of them at the same time early on in the round, you will only have one back up after 30 seconds, and then the second will come back up 30 seconds after that. Because of this, if you're taking map control early on in the round, you want to use only a single smoke and then wait to deploy both at the same time when you're actually hitting a site. The limited casting range of the smokes means that you will often need to play in sort of a central spot on the map or more preferably in a double smokes lineup with agents like Viper, Astra, or Harbor being excellent pairings. I think this is actually where Clove will really shine because it lets you be super liberal with your smoke usage and focus on just controlling one part of the map while the other smoker does the other half. The most important part of Clove smokes though is the new mechanic of utility after death. And this is really crazy. Once you die on Clove, your smokes stay as an active ability with the same cooldown that they had while you were alive. 
The difference is that your location is locked to wherever your corpse fell and the casting range is reduced to about 75% of normal radius. So there are some situations where you'll just die on the other side of the map and you can't really use your smokes to help your team. Also, I think that the UI for this feels a little bit clunky and it's definitely going to take some getting used to for people to remember that they need to stay locked into the game after they die because this is a really powerful ability. It means that Clove can continue helping their team after they're dead. And and this means that you can do stuff like entry for your team onto the site, even taking point and just kind of dying for your team to get through the choke point. But then you still have the ability to play post plant and drop smokes for them to help them fight against the retake. Likewise on defense, Clove players will be rewarded for fighting for every single inch of space and really hard anchoring sites because even if they die after you know getting a kill or two, they're still there. They're still basically in the game and able to help their teammates play the retake by smoking off the choke point or smoking off the spike for a team to diffuse. The impact of this is really something that just can't be understated and you won't really feel it until you've actually played against it. It's a very bizarre mechanic and honestly might end up being completely overpowered in the right hands, which makes me a little bit worried for the professional meta. However, in a normal ranked context, it's actually a genius move by Riot to get players to lock in the most hated role in the game. They've created a smokes agent that is rewarded for playing way too aggressively and then even if you die constantly at the beginning of the round, you still get to provide the most important part of your utility kit to your team. And this makes playing the smokes role fun, and even the most brain dead duelist players have basically no excuse not to fill if somebody insta locks their role. Not dead yet is Clove's ultimate ability, and for seven points, the ability to self revive probably is way too strong. Yes, there is a timer that kills you after 12 seconds if you don't get a kill or a damaging assist. However, you can immediately be back in the fight, and even if you did damage before dying, revived, and then a teammate finishes off that damaged player, you'll still get credit for the assist. For sure, there will be some funny moments where a Clove player revives themselves only to have the entire other team run away and hide until Clove keels over again, but the power of this ability is immense. In some ways, it's basically just like having a Phoenix ultimate because you can charge through a smoke, break onto a site, and die for your team because you can just revive yourself back around the corner. This ability further pushes the duelist playstyle and also just rewards you for fragging out in general because collecting as many ultimate points as possible is the best way to snowball the game on Clove. So now let's talk about maps in the meta because I really do think that this is an agent that could drastically impact the game. Overall, I think Clove's playstyle on every map is viable and especially good on the smaller ones like Bind and Ascent. However, if you can get a second controller like Viper on your team, then you can really slot Clove into basically any map really comfortably. Even the wide maps like Breeze feel pretty good because on Clove, you can just focus on controlling either middle or one of the sites while the Viper does the rest of the work. And since you're rewarded for taking and winning duels, these large kind of aim centric maps are actually quite a good fit for Clove's playstyle. As for agent pairings, this is where things could get really spicy. And I've already mentioned the dual smokes comps feeling like the best way to utilize the agent, but I do think that it gets really interesting if you kind of lean into Clove's duelist tendencies. The only thing Clove is really missing from just fully being a duelist is a flash ability. So if you're just to pair them with a couple of initiators like a KO and a Gecko, you could simply flash the Clove in first and then play it like any regular duelist and let them pop off. Any sort of damaging utility is also really good with Clove thanks to the powerful decay from metal, so I would expect there to be some pretty nasty shock dart or molly or raise grenade combos that net tons of free kills and stall out choke points. I could absolutely see Clove replacing Omen on several maps in the pool, and Brimstone spot on Bind has never been more in question if you ask me. After playing several games with and against Clove, it's really clear to me that this is an agent that is going to dominate ranked games. Smokes are one of the most powerful abilities in the game, but often feel a little bit less impactful than, you know, say a duelist because ranked is very uncoordinated and it can be incredibly frustrating to lock in a controller agent only to have both of your duelists be way too afraid to push through a choke point. But with Clove, you're encouraged to take matters into your own hands. And since you are punished significantly less than basically any other agent in the game, if you die first, you should just go in. You can just do the job that the duelist refused to do. 
With Clove, we're actually getting kind of the best of both worlds, and that versatility is a huge part of what makes a strong agent in Valorant. To be honest, that versatility may be the thing that actually pushes Clove over the edge into being super oppressively broken and destined for nerfs. When you consider their potential impact on attack, defense, eco rounds, and the super forgiving nature of having heals and a revive, you get an agent that is almost too easy to play. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, because I do think that one thing Valorant will always struggle with is that as more agents get introduced to the game, it becomes harder and harder to pick up and play for new players. So introducing a character that simplifies a lot of the game and makes a lot of the more difficult and annoying aspects easier to execute is kind of an awesome idea. I'm just a little bit worried about how powerful that advantage could be in skilled hands.